guys know, it's the Queen's Jubilee weekend here in London. I was just on my way home uh, in Marleybone here, getting off of Baker Street, heading back up to my flat. I found this block party here. I mean, obviously everyone's really excited that it's the weekend, the weather's nice, and of course it's the Queen's, what, 60th year in power here in England. So uh, I decided to keep reading Richard II. Which is probably a treasonous thing to do on a weekend like this, but uh, York and I haven't uh, shied away from conflict yet. We're not exactly going to start now. Act 1, Scene 4, Richard II. It's the king with green and bagged at one door, and Lord O'Merrill at the other. We did observe. Cousin O'Merrill, how far brought you High Hereford on his way? I brought High Hereford, if you call him so, but to the next highway, and there I left him. And stay, what store of parting tears were shed? Faith, none for me. It's at the northeast wind, which then blew bitterly against our faces, awaked the sleeping room, and so by chance did grace our hollow parting with a tear. What said our cousin when you parted with him? Farewell. Before my heart disdain that my tongue should so profane the word, that taught me craft to counterfeit oppression of such grief, that words seem buried in my sorrow's grave. Mary, would the word farewell have lengthened hours and added years to the short banishment? He should have had a volume of farewells, but since it would not, he had none of me. He is our cousin's cousin, but tis doubt the time shall call him home from banishment, whether our kinsman comes to see his friends. Ourself and Bushy, Bagadir, and Green, observed his courtship to the common people. We did seem to dive into their hearts with humble and familiar courtesy. What reverence he did throw away on slaves, wooing poor craftsmen with the craft of smiles, and patient underbearing of his fortune, as to were to banish their effects with him. Off goes his bonnet to an oyster wench. Grace of Raymond did Godspeed and did well, and had the tribute of his supple knee with thanks my countrymen, my loving friends, as were our England in reversion his, and he, our subjects next degree. Well, he's gone. And with him go these thoughts. Now for the rebels which stand out in Ireland, expedient manage must be made, my liege, ere further leisure yield them further means for their advantage and your highness loss. We will ourselves in person to this room. And for our coffers, with too great a court and liberal largesse, are grown somewhat light, we are enforced to farm our royal we are enforced to farm our royal realm. The revenue whereof shall furnish us for our affairs in hand. If that comes short, our substitutes at home shall have blank charters. Where too, when they shall know what men are rich, they shall subscribe them for large sums of gold and send them after to, to supply our wants. For we will make for Ireland presently with Bushy. Bushy! What news? Oh, John of God is grievous sick, my lord. Suddenly taken and hath sent post haste to retreat your majesty to visit him. Where lies he? At Ely House. Now put it God in the physician's mind to help him to his grave immediately. The lining of his coffer shall make coats to deck our soldiers for these Irish wars. Come, gentlemen, let's all go visit him. Pray God we may make haste and come too late. Amen. Wicked. Wicked. 